Hey, and congratulations on getting access to this video course. We're going to talk about how to turn your idea into a WordPress plugin. Now, we're not really going to talk about hiring anybody or anything like that. We're going to talk about a very crucial process that most people tend to forget about. So, a lot of people tend to go from idea to trying to hire a programmer. And that's the wrong way to go about this. And the reason being is because a lot of times, if you do not write your idea and turn that into the necessary project specifications that a programmer would understand, your costs will actually be higher or you will get a lousy programmer that will say, yes, I can do that. I can program your idea. And then months later, you find out that the programmer doesn't know what they're doing and it's just a mess. So that's the reason why this is a process where we want to take the, the idea and turn it into a visual flow chart. We want to develop the user interface and we want to figure out how to communicate that properly to the right programmer. By doing this, you're going to attract the right programmer instead of the wrong programmer. All right. So first things first, this is video number one, which is the introduction. And I want to start by talking about a goal. The goal here, like I said, is to create project specifications that any programmer will understand. Yes. This process might be a little boring, but it's going to save you a lot of money. Instead of spending thousands of dollars, you could be spending, you know, 500 or even 1000 in the long run. Instead of wasting time and actually this taking four to five months to create, you could save time. So this is all about how to save time and money by doing things right get this wrong. And like I said, you're going to pay more. You're going to attract low skilled people that are going to say, yes, I can do anything. And you're going to not going to know what to do. You're going to say, yes, you're going to give in and you're going to get the wrong person. So I want to make sure that you get this right and you're going to pay less and attract the right person for this job. So quickly, I want to talk about mindset first. I really want you to focus on the, how the software solves a problem. Don't focus on how much money am I going to make or how profitable is this going to be? Focus on how the software solves a problem. And yes, that's fine when you're trying to figure out what the software is going to be about. You want to make sure that it's going to be profitable, but at the same time, you want to make sure that it solves a major problem because that's where your money is going to be. So solution comes first, money will follow later. Now here's a quick overview of what's inside this video course. Video one is obviously this particular video. Video number two is going to be researching a profitable plugin idea. So we are going to look at profitable plugins. We're going to look at why they are profitable plugins. So you can get an idea of what your best plugin is going to be. So if you have a plugin, great. You probably could skip this process, but it might be good to watch this so that you have an idea to make sure your plugin is profitable, right? If you don't have an idea, this is a great video for you. Video number three is verifying your idea. We're going to make sure that it is indeed profitable. Video number four, we're going to talk about digging deeper. We want to analyze the situation so that we make sure that we are doing our due diligence. Video number five is determining what the software does, which is a crucial part. This is a pretty much a make it or break it because this is the reason why somebody is going to buy your plugin. Video number six is list to flow. We're going to take the list that we created in the previous video and we're going to map it out by creating a flow chart. And the reason being is because you want to see it text wise in a list, you want to see it visually and you want to see the user interface, which is video number seven. Video number eight is writing your specifications. So basically the whole goal of this video course is to get to this point. 
And of course, last but not least, once you have your project WordPress plugin specification in hand, we move on to finding programmers in video nine. Now, I'm not really going to dive too much into this. I really want to focus on how to find the right programmer, what characteristics you should look for. I'm not really going to go to a site and show you how necessarily to hire somebody. That might be a topic for a different day, but what's crucial is what most people forget about is how do you find the right programmer? What to look for in a programmer? So that way you can create the right job post wherever you decide to go. Now let's talk about what you need to get started. Obviously you're not going to need to have a lot of tools for this particular practice and process, but you're going to need a way to map things out, whether it be a flow chart system or a mind mapping software. We recommend lucid chart, which is what we're going to be using. However, if you want to use a mind mapping software like XMind or even a paper, if you are organized, that's fine. But we highly recommend Lucidchart just because it's really, really easy to map things out. And you'll see what I mean when I actually jump right in. And of course, you're going to need to have an open mind. A lot of people come into this thinking that they know a lot or thinking that, oh, I've got this idea. I just want to jump straight in. No, none of that. You really have to come here with an open mind and with the thought process that, okay, profitability aside, money aside, let's focus on what problem that we are solving. Don't bring any assumptions because assumptions are very dangerous and they actually get us in trouble because we think we have an idea of how things work. So I want you to come here with an open mind, with the assumption that everything is being start from scratch. All right. All right. So ready? Let's go. Okay. So welcome back. This is video number two, and we are going to talk about researching a profitable plugin idea. So don't worry about anything else except for getting an idea of what's out there and different ideas that you could potentially create. Now, obviously, if you already have a plugin in mind, you probably could skip this video, but it's a good video to watch just in case you decide to have another idea in the future. So let's do some quick research to show you what plugins are in demand by looking at what we call consumer demand. And that's really what drives whether or not your plugin is going to be profitable or not, whether or not there is a need out there. So there are two ways of doing this. Either there are many plugins out there already and you can look at them and look what's wrong with them and see what people are saying and improve on that, which is actually the easiest way to go about doing this and can be very profitable. Or you can develop your brand new idea. Plugin doesn't exist or anything like that. But with that, it's a little bit more time to try to figure out consumer demand, but there are ways of going about doing that. So consumer demand is really, really important here. So I really want to drive that home. All great WordPress plugins are born out of problems that people are facing. So if this is a problem that you're facing, that's great. Then you can associate with that. You know exactly how that feels. If this is a problem that you do not face, but you can research it and figure out how people are feeling about it, what people are doing about it to solve that issue and how your WordPress plugin can speed the process up, then that's a good thing as well. But you really want to get into the brain of the consumer. So let me go ahead and show you how to find consumer demand through the use of free keyword tools and how to start with Google and research from that point on. Now, before I jump in and start talking about consumer demand or anything like that, I wanted to talk briefly about what you should be looking for as you're looking for the consumer demand. Now, obviously when it comes to any type of software or WordPress plugin, what you're trying to look for is you're trying to find 
some sort of tedious process that takes time and it's a very manual process. So what I mean by that is something that somebody actually does either on their computer or wherever else and it's just taking a lot of time and you have to speed that process up and they're willing to pay for the ability to speed that process up. All right, so if you look at most WordPress plugins, they basically speed a process up or they help you in some sort of way. They basically take some process that could take anywhere from a couple hours to a couple days or even a couple weeks and it speeds the whole process up, thereby saving you time. That's one of the reasons why most people buy pieces of software because it automates the process. So as you're looking through for consumer demand or as you're looking for plugins, you wanna find something that is sort of a pain point, meaning it's really frustrating because you have to take all this time to actually do it. All right, so if we head back over to Google here and if we think about it for just a second, if we think that softwares often are born from frustrations. So you can go to Google and type something like top frustrations and let Google complete it for you, such as top frustrations in life, top frustrations at work, top frustrations in gaming. So you could think about something you enjoy yourself or something that you have done that takes time on the computer and you want to speed the process up. All right. But usually this process with a WordPress plugin needs to be something that is on your website. So top frustrations related to maybe your website and then go from there and try to figure out what these top frustrations are. So if you just take some time to just go through the articles, so let's open up these here. And you may or may not find the WordPress plugin that you're looking for, but you're kind of getting a, an idea of what is happening on the website itself. So we can see like playing messenger, lacking communication, changes, continuous edits. So maybe you could develop a WordPress plugin around that. Wavering deadlines, time management. You can develop a WordPress time management plugin. You can go through here. We can go to a different article here. So this is Quora, and we see this guy says providing high quality fresh content. Maybe you could develop a plugin that pulls in YouTube videos or content creation to make it so it's easy for people to develop content. Or maybe you can develop something that allows them to create uh, fresh articles uh, really, really fast without plagiarizing, of course. And then we go down and let's look at a different article. What are your top three frustrations with your website? Too much content that overwhelmed the reader. User design and user experience. Directing the user to the right content and workflow. So going through here, what you're looking for is a pattern. If you can see several people saying I have problems because just finding fresh content is just a, a big roadblock in my life. If you see tons and tons and tons of people saying that, the next thing you want to do is you want to head on over to wordpress.org slash plugins over here. And then you want to type that in. So we could type in something like time management and see what we get. So as we can see a good amount of plugins and we can see if we can see more plugins, that means there is definitely a demand. Now, if you see a lot of plugins, but there's no feedback or ratings or anything like that, that might not be a good sign. But another thing you can do is you can see a lot of times you'll have like a really good plugin, but nobody leaves any reviews, right? So we got four and a half stars out of five, 22 reviews. But if you look down on the bottom left hand corner of these boxes, you can see that 40,000 people installed it. All right, so that definitely shows there is a demand for that plugin. So if we look over here, easy appointments, 3,000 installs, 100,000 installs for events manager. So we can see the demand by looking at wordpress.org 
slash plugins. But Jetpack here is obviously created by WordPress, so obviously they have 3 million active installs. So that means that 3 million people installed it on their WordPress site. So what you want to do is you want to go through here and find a WordPress plugin that really stands out to you. So let's say we want to click on this one here and you want to get an idea of what it does and then you want to take a look at the one star ratings. Why one star ratings? Because you want to find people's frustrations. You want to see if you can find a pattern. Now if this WordPress plugin is really good and you're asking how can I compete with these guys? Well you can look at the one star ratings and see where this plugin falls short. If constantly people are saying this falls short because of this, 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 and this, you can go out and create a WordPress plugin based on that particular shortcoming. And then you come out with it and you know that it's going to sell because you have so many people that are frustrated. Now, obviously you need to make sure that people are willing to buy for that. And we'll talk more about that later. But that's just a simple process that you can take by going to Google, typing in top frustrations, website, or things I hate about my website, or, or something related to WordPress, and then find those and dig deep into those pain points. You can do the same thing with YouTube. You can do the same thing with Facebook. Use the search bar at the top and find frustrations that people have. So that's a good way to kind of figure out consumer demand in the terms of figuring out how many people are frustrated with the specific problem. And that's really what we're trying to drive home. All right, so let's move on to the next video. Okay, so welcome back. This is video number three, and we're going to talk about how to verify your idea. So in video number two, we talked about finding consumer demand finding the frustration and the pain points, and then figuring out what the problem was. Now let's verify to make sure that it is profitable. So we want to take that research and start spying on software developers that are already doing well. You already saw a glimpse of the active installs and how to figure that out, but we're going to take it one step further. And I want to tell you that not all plugins succeed and it's easy to want to jump in and just start selling. There are many marketplaces out there that allow you to sell your WordPress plugins. And let's take a look at some of those places and verify your idea. Okay, so what you want to do is head on over to the browser here and you can go to Google, you can type in WordPress plugin marketplace, but what you're primarily looking for are marketplaces that sell WordPress plugins and people are actually buying them. That's what you're looking for. You're not looking for marketplaces that are giving away free WordPress plugins. You're wanting to make sure that people are willing to pay money for it. Now you can go through here, decide what you want to go to. That's fine. But in particular, I typically use a site called Envato, Envato Market. And in this case, the site is located at codecanon.net. That's codecanon.net. And if you go over here, you're going to be able to go under WordPress and you can see all of the WordPress plugins. So they have everything categorized. You can have add ons, advertising, auctions, calendars, e commerce forums, forums galleries, media, membership sites, newsletters, SEO, and so much more. All right. So you, you can go through here. You can pick a category if you want, let's say SEO, or you can simply enter the keyword up here. So if we chose SEO, we can see that there are 65 WordPress SEO plugins. Now, how do we know if it's going to sell or not? All right. So one good indication is with CodeCannon at least, and this might be different with other marketplaces, but you can actually see the amount of sales that they are making. So you can see, for example, this plugin is only has three sales and is $18. This one's $12, has four sales. This one has 29 sales. Now you can 
filter things out and find ones that are getting the highest ratings, for example, four, four stars and above. So we can see that here. And we can look at the ones that are the top sellers. So we can see this one has about 6,400 sales. This one has 3,700 sales. We can see this one is a kind of a content curator. So this one creates articles. So remember we looked at the frustration that a lot of people had was number one, creating content. So we can see that this is definitely matches that research. So we can see that People are willing to pay money for an article rewriter. And this also has really good star ratings, which is a good indication. Now, if we take a look at it, like we said earlier, we can look at the comments, look at the reviews, look at the negative reviews and get an idea of what people are saying that they're frustrated with in terms of this plugin. And you could go along and make it better. So that's one way of doing it. But I'm just verifying that indeed what we looked at earlier was profitable all right so that's a good indication that people are actually buying all right so next thing we could type in time management which is something that we had searched for previously now when i type this in if you look to the left you'll see that it's looking for time management but also wordpress seo so i don't need the wordpress seo but I am still looking for top sellers, four stars or more, and newest items. So maybe not newest items. I'm just looking for a good indication that something is selling. So time management, we see nine here that fit that criteria. We can see there's a booking system for appointment booking. We see there is a freelance, looks like a CRM content relationship management tool. We can see there's timetable for responsive scheduling. Let's look down here. So as far as time management, it looks like it's just these two here, the booking system and this one here. And we can see that definitely there's a big demand. There's 6,000 sales for that. And there's 4,000 sales with here. So just go here and type the keyword in here and go through the same process that I went through to figure out, is my idea selling? If your idea is not selling, that doesn't mean that it's not going to sell. It just means that it's gonna take a longer period of time to have to educate people about the plugin, all right? So now the worst thing that you can do is to go into a market, develop an idea that there's no demand for the market and if it's a good idea and you really feel like this is something I've done the consumer demand, there's it shows there, but nobody's selling this WordPress plugin, then you might be the first person who's actually selling this plugin. And that's not a, a bad thing. It just means that nobody has paved the way and you're going to have to pave the way. So you're going to have to educate the market, which can take years. So realistically, it can take uh, several years before you actually start making income because you're spending all that time trying to educate the market, if that makes sense. But if you find something that is already profitable and build upon the frustrations that people have, these people have already paved the way for you. And having competition is actually a good sign because people are actually are already educated and they are buying. So with that said, let's move on to the next video. All right, so welcome back. This is video number four, dig deeper. So once you have solidified your idea, let's dig deeper. And what I mean by that is trying to actually analyze, break it down, start writing things down and start brainstorming because we've already done the research process. But this is usually when people go out and hire a programmer and they say, hey, I really like this plugin and they approach a programmer and say, can you clone this plugin? Now I caution you and I say, don't do this. That's a big mistake. And this is something that a lot of us do. I did it at one time. I've had uh, seen a lot of people do this before and it just creates a lot of heartache, lots of loss of money and loss of time 
because what you end up doing is you hand this idea to somebody else who has a different idea. So it's kind of like the telephone game where somebody tells you something and then you tell somebody something and then somebody else tells something something. So their idea of what you just said has nothing to do with what you're thinking. So you want to make sure that you have a clear cut project specification that says this is exactly what I want and then they go and program it. All right. So that's the reason why I'm putting you through this process. So like I said, never, I repeat, never ask a programmer to clone another plugin. Make sure that you have dug deeper and figured out what exactly your plugin does. And it's okay. You want to figure out what the plugin should do, what your competitors aren't doing, and then making it better. So we talked briefly about this in the previous videos, but I really want to drive it home and I really want you to put it on paper. So that's why I am repeating a few things. So the goal in this video is to merely figure out what the major problem is. List out the problem, list out the solutions that are there for the problem and that solve the problem. Is there a manual process that can be automated? Is there a tedious process within this problem? Because that's a good indication on whether or not this is going to be a successful WordPress plugin or not. Successful meaning whether it can be developed or not. And I'll actually show you an example. I'll break it down so that you can actually see what that looks like. We're not just going to talk theory and concepts here and fundamentals. We're actually going to take an idea. I'm going to list it out, list out the problem and so that you can see the exact process and that you should be able to follow along. Now, another thing is, is there a process? And if there is, this is great because then you know you can automate or speed up the process by using a WordPress plugin. So let's dig deeper and let's look at an example. Okay, so homework time. <laughs> what you need to do is you need to pull out a WordPad or uh, your favorite word processor and then simply type these out. So number one, list out the problem. Number two, what is the manual process? Number three, how annoying is this process? And number four, what does this process make you lose? Number five, what does this process make you want to do right now? Does it want to make you pull out your hair? Number six, list out possible solutions. So possible meaning different solutions. List out how these solutions would make you better for number seven, make you happier and make you gain something. So what I'm pushing you through is you're going through what the consumer is thinking. All right. So list out the problems. Let's think about some problems that we actually looked at. If you remember in the previous videos, we found that a lot of people were frustrated with creating fresh content. So creating fresh content on an ongoing basis. So that was one of the major frustrations in relation to the frustrations with the website. Remember now, what is the manual process? Well, there are many different ways of going about this. So manual process is obviously creating content from scratch. Now, what goes into that content creating from scratch? And I want you to list out everything that you can think of. So in this case, the manual process is finding maybe keywords that people are looking for. So maybe finding topics. So that would go under finding topics. And then when you're finding topics, finding keywords that people are looking for, and then finding or writing articles. And before that, okay, so finding topics, let's see here, finding keywords that people are looking for, how to write the article maybe,
And not just finding keywords, but maybe finding key points within that specific content piece. How to write the article, you know, writing it well, you know, grammar. Is this, and as we can see, it's very time consuming. Finding topics, and not just finding topics, but finding topics that are hot or in demand. Now, as we go through this process, what are you noticing right now? I'm noticing that a lot of it is actually the process of finding topics, finding keywords, finding key points. That process seems to be the most tedious process. So this, by doing this, this allows you to see where the frustration point is. So it's not necessarily writing the article. Writing the article might be easier because you can always outsource that and you can find somebody to write the article, but finding the topics, finding the keywords, finding the key points, making sure that article is actually interesting, that seems to be the hardest part. So what if we created a plugin that would go out and find content that is hot demand and all that? All right, so Let's move through here. How annoying is this process? Very time consuming. If you think about just through that one process, doing all that research and all that can take hours. So what does this process make you lose? I lose hours that could be spent on other things. And that's just one article, very time consuming, take hours. What does this process make you want to go do right now? Um, it's very frustrating. I can see because creating, you know, if, if I have to do this on and on and on, it's a very, very tedious process. So I think in my brain, if I had a plugin that would allow me to find content, maybe not necessarily the topics and all that, but maybe find hot topics, but maybe help me find hot content. And let's see, what does this process make you want to do right now? So makes me want to scream or walk away from the computer and go do something else. All right. So obviously, Different people is going to be different, but you're thinking about your prospect too. It probably makes them want to scream. It probably wants makes them want to walk away and go do something else. And that's not productive. So what are kind of possible solutions that we can take? So possible solutions are that they have a WordPress plugin that creates or finds hot topics, keywords, key points. And the question is, how are we going to create the content? Well, there are several different ways in creating content. You can either con do content creation, which basically means getting topics and actual content from somebody else and posting it on your site and maybe responding to that content. So that's content creation. Or you can create content from scratch. Now, like we saw earlier, the tedious process seems to be this right here because you can always hire somebody to create the content as long as you have this information or you can have a system that will find hot topics and hot keywords and key points and all that and curate the content. Now, we need to figure out what do we do want to do? And you have to be very, very specific as much as possible. Remember, the plugin that we saw earlier was a plugin at Envato code canon.net. It was a plugin that basically allowed you to create articles. So create content from scratch. So you could do that. 
or you could just do content curation. Now, if you create content from scratch, obviously that's going to be very, very tedious. I'm gonna tell you right now that unless you're a very highly technical person uh, and, you're, and if you're a newbie especially or intermediate, this is gonna be very hard to do. So what you might wanna do is you might even want to go further and go on freelancing sites and pay somebody to consult with. So pay a programmer to consult with to try to figure out how hard potentially would it be to do this or do this. So let's do content curation. And I think content curation is super hot. That's what a lot of people are doing. And not just everyone is doing it, but it works. People on Facebook pages, you see every day, most Facebook fan pages, what they're doing is content creation. They're pulling in memes, pictures, or even blogs or sites that are not theirs, but they're sharing it. That's content creation. So let's maybe develop a WordPress plugin that finds hot topics, keywords, key points, and content creation. So finds, in this case, finds hot content that is curated from other people's sites. All right. So list out how these solutions would make your life better. If you had a WordPress plugin that would allow you to go out, find hot content, not just any content, but hot content that is curated from other people's sites. How would make that make you feel? I would save lots of hours of time, make me happier, gain confidence to focus on my WordPress blog or site. Okay, so essentially what you've just done right now is you figured out what the pain points are. So you can use this later on to create the marketing material for your product. But while doing so, we figured out creating fresh, fresh content is on an ongoing basis is the major problem. And then the possible solution is this one here. So this is actually what you really want. So we're gonna bold that right here. And I'm gonna copy this down here. So the problem and the solution, that's all we want. So the problems here and the solutions here. So creating the fresh content on an ongoing basis, our solution is to find hot content that is curated from other people's sites. So in the next video, when we dig even further and we actually create a list, we wanna break this down, all right? So that said, let's move on to the next video. Okay, so well, welcome to video number five. Let's determine what the software does. So once you figured out what the big problem is going to solve, it's time to figure out how it will do it in more detail. So in the previous video, we figured out what the solution was, what basically how frustrated your consumer would be with the problem and how happy they would be with the problem solved. So now we need to dig deeper further and create what we call a to-do list. And if you've created grocery lists, to-do lists, then creating software specifications is actually very, very similar. And it's actually a very easy thing to do once you have figured out what kind of problem it'll solve and how it will go about doing that. And that's what we're gonna do in this particular video. Now, the way to create software is to create a sequential and logical flow. So it's not gonna be just a randomized grocery list. It's gonna be a sequential logical flow. So whatever you do in the beginning is gonna impact the end. And it'll make more sense in just a second. 
So in other words, if let's say, for example, if a user clicks a button, you're going to write down what happens. If the user takes a specific action, then what happens? If the user does not take that action, then what happens? So you're really going to have to figure out basically all the steps of the process. And then what happens if this happened, then this happened. If this does not happen, then this does not happen. Or if this does not happen, what happens? So it's kind of like the if and else statements. It's a logical if this happens, then that happens. So it's kind of like a cause and effect, essentially. If I drop this ball, then the ball bounces, right? If I throw the ball at the wall, then the ball either bounces to the left or the right. But in this case, you're going to know exactly where the ball falls if you're going to be able to develop the software correct. So let me actually look deeper. Let's take an example and I'm going to show you how this is all going to work so that it makes sense to you. Okay, so back to where we left off in the previous video, what we're going to do now is we are going to break down the list of possible solutions. So we already figured out that the problem was creating fresh content on an ongoing basis. Now what we're going to do is we are going to take the list of possible solutions right here, which is finds hot content that is curated from other people's sites and maybe places it on the WordPress post or the page. So let's write that down. So finds hot content that is curated. Let's say break it down here. So basically what we're trying to do here is we're trying to figure out the process, whether you go out on YouTube and you watch a video and you figure out the step-by-step -step process, what happens behind the scenes, what it does, what the user does to have to interact with the software for it to do such a thing. And you know, you're, you're not going to get everything perfect, but if you find a good programmer, they're going to be able to fill it between the gaps. You're going to be able to figure out what they need to do. What we're trying to do is we're trying to do as much legwork as possible to make it easy for the programmer. All right. So first we need to have a tool, and a WordPress plugin where maybe somebody enters a topic or a keyword. So, let's so say user enters something like a, I'll put brackets around it, topics, keywords, something. And then the plugin needs to do something next. So obviously, you know, if you go to Google, for example, and let me break it down. If we go to Google, the user obviously goes to Google. Now the user essentially can be the plugin. So the plugin goes to Google, then it takes the keyword and the topic, and then it enters it into Google, for example. So let's say we're looking for some hot topics such as kidney stone solutions. All right. So let's just put that here. And so we have that here. So the machine comes here, they look through and they try to find hot content. Now the question that we need to figure out is what is considered hot topic or hot content? It may not necessarily be something that is ranked up here, right? So how do we know if it is hot content or not? Well, one way to figuring out, especially within Google is when you type in something like kidney stone treatment, you see how Google suggests certain topics and all that. So these, we know these are hot topics because Google suggests these in order for these to actually get in here, this basically means that tons and tons of people are typing these in. All right. So maybe we can have a WordPress plugin that goes to Google. We type that keyword in and it tries to fill in the rest. So maybe it grabs the Google suggests keywords right here. And then from that, it gives you a list of keywords. All right. So in this case, 
we can say kidney stone. And then if somebody types that in, it grabs these in here. So let me write that down here. Okay, so user enters topics and keywords. Um, let's say user goes to Google. And I'm going to actually, I'm going to rewrite this in a minute, but let's just make it simple. User goes to Google, user enters topics and keywords. Google gives a list of suggested keywords, suggestions. And the normal process is that we, the user, copies the top 10 suggested keywords. So what I'm doing right now is I'm trying to break it down to what the user does. Don't worry about what the plugin does yet. We're going to do all that in just a minute. So user goes to Google, they type in the keyword, then Google gives a list of keywords. So you're telling us what the machine does and the user does. User copies the top 10 keywords and then maybe the user goes to, let's say Facebook or some blog site, maybe blogger or let's say, we'll, we'll just call this go user goes to popular blog directory. User then types in the top 10 suggested keywords and then user finds hot content. And normally the user would link hot content to the blog. And that's basically the process of finding hot content. So that's the process right here. It's a step-by-step -step process. See, it's kind of like a grocery list, but it's kind of not in a certain way. It's a sequential, logical, step-by-step -step process. So if you think about something easier, like, baking a cake. So if you look at a recipe, you see that the recipe tells you step by step what you need to do. So you need to gather the items. You typically you need to preheat the oven and then you need to mix in the dry materials before you mix in the eggs and all of that. So there's actually a process to all of this, right? And that's what you're really trying to figure out is the whole process. Don't worry about the if and else statements yet. Let's just get this done. Okay, so the next thing I normally do is I take this information here and I'm gonna leave that up at the top, but I'm gonna make a brand new copy and paste here. So you see everything from here to here. And we'll call this WordPress plugin versus the user. So now what we're trying to do is we're trying to write what the process is, and then we're trying to translate that into how the WordPress plugin acts and how the user acts. Okay, so far starting from the beginning again, user goes to Google. Now, in this case, the user is going to have to stay inside of the WordPress plugin. They're not going to be able to leave or anything like that. They're going to, we're going to want them to be able to click a button and it all happens. All right. So, user goes to WordPress plugin after they have activated it. And then the user enters maybe a keyword, a keyword. All right. Now, obviously they're still going to have to go to Google, right? But the user's not going to go, go to Google or any outside sites. That's the WordPress plugins job, right? So the WordPress plugin, we're just going to call it plugin. Plugin goes to Google and then enters that keyword that the user just typed in. Now, Google gives a list of those suggested keywords and then the plugin copies those top 10 suggested keywords. Then the plugin goes to the popular blog directory, whatever that we specify later. You could even tell the programmer, hey, I want these lists of you know, links or directories. And then the user types in the top 10 suggested keywords. Now, 
In this case, the plugin is doing everything. The only, typically what happens is the user just enters the keyword and then the plugin does the rest. So the plugin types in the top 10 suggested keywords. Plugin shows the hot, maybe shows a list of the hot content. User sees the list and chooses. And then the plugin copies a link of the hot content to the WordPress blog. So this takes somewhat of a practice, but that's why I'm showing you the step-by-step -step process. So first things first, you go through here, you list it out, then you reorganize it. And then if you notice what I'm trying to do is I'm just showing what the user sees. So the user goes to the WordPress plugin, they enter a keyword, but then when it times to go outside, the plugin goes and does the rest. And then it pretty much finds the content for us. So really what the user only sees in this case is they're seeing the WordPress plugin, they enter the keyword, they click enter. And then as they're waiting, the plugin shows the hot content and they immediately see the hot content because a human ultimately is going to have to decide what content is best for them. Now you could make it automated if you want, and you say plugin sees a list of content and then chooses it based on certain criteria, and then it spits it out, it's all automatic, you can do that. Uh, but at the end of the day, you have to pick and choose what is the user gonna do as a human, and then what does the plugin do as a machine? And how smart should that machine be? So pretty much that's it. Now, we could go further and we could do if and else statements. So we can go back here and say, if the user goes, well, obviously the, the user is gonna go the plugin. So um, if we go down here and it says user enters keyword, we could say, if the user enters a keyword, do this. Now, obviously if the user does not enter a keyword, nothing happens. So we don't need that. But if there was a different path or a different option, we could do that as well. So if a user enters a keyword, then we take them on a progression. And I'll show you more about that in the visual map later. But we can say if this that happens, then, then the plugin does this, then this, then this, then this, then this, and then this. Then if user sees a list and chooses, then this. Now, obviously, if user does nothing, then nothing happens. So it's pretty self-explanatory. Most of the time, that's the case. So we're pretty much done now. That's all we need to do. And if this seems a little complicated, I'm just going to say and put it out there that this does take time. You need to get a hang of it. Um, you could even go about going out and just writing things that you normally do day to day, like brushing your teeth and all of that and try to get a hang of it first before you actually move forward with this process. It does take time because I am trying to teach you from a programmer to a newbie. So it does take time. So don't worry if you don't get it right the first time, but I'm going to show you how to turn this into a map in the next video. Okay. So welcome to video number six. We're going to talk about list to flow. Once you've created your step-by-step -step sequential and logical to-do list, you're going to need to turn it into a visual flow chart that makes sense because this is what's going to help you and the programmer understand how all the missing pieces or pieces of the puzzle flow together. So let's hop on over to Lucid Chart and build out your visual map, which is crucial to understanding how it all works. All right, so let me go ahead and show you how. Okay, so we're gonna take the list that we created earlier, which was the if then else type statement. As you can see, this one's actually fairly easy because it's pretty self-explanatory, it's very straightforward. Depending on how complex your software is gonna be, it's gonna vary. So I'm not gonna be able to say if it's super complex or whatever, it's gonna take you time. 
I'm not going to be able to tell you how long it's going to take, but ultimately, if you want to sell software, this is all part of the process. Now we're using Lucid Chart, as I told you earlier, and very, very easy to use. What we're trying to do is we're trying to turn what we see here into a visual flow chart. It's going to be able to make more sense when you actually see it visually. All right. So let's just enter this. So WordPress plugin, let's kind of name it first. It's going to be WordPress plugin colon hot content finder. And of course I probably could create a better name for that, but we're just going to go with it. So I'm going to type that in here and I pulled in a text icon. What's nice about Lucidchart is you can pull these items over and you can create basically a flow chart. So I'm going to make this a little bit bigger so that you can see it not too big like that. And we're going to put that here. And the next thing we want to do is the user goes to the WordPress plugin. All right. So let's just copy a box over here and type that in. So user goes to WordPress plugin. Or what we could do is we could make a user. We could, let's see, I don't know if there's any icons for people in here, but let's see. I'll just make this user, all caps, like that. So what's nice about this is everything is organized. Everything looks nice, and that's what you're trying to do. So WordPress plugin. So user comes here, and what do they see next? They see maybe the settings or something, like some sort of settings or search form. All right, so user goes to plugin, they enter a keyword. Okay, so the next thing is on the search form, they can enter keyword. Now, before we do this, what does the person see? All right, so do they see maybe a list of their campaigns first? So you want to take a look at other plugins and get an idea. So we could have plugins and we can have campaigns. So maybe they see a list of campaigns first. So we'll type in list of campaigns. And I'm going to try to make this a little bit bigger so that you can see it like that. There we go. So user, we'll make the user kind of a pink. So that's nice. You can also change the box colors. You can also change the colors of the text as well and the font as well. You can also drag and drop images into this as well. So there's a lot of things you can do, but just keep it simple. All right, so they see a list of campaigns and then maybe they have the ability to create new campaigns. So create new campaigns. So what you're doing, as you can see here, it's not exact with this. It's sort of even more. So they have the ability to see a list of campaigns that they can go and edit the campaign or they can create a brand new campaign. If they create a brand new campaign, then what next? Well, next, maybe they create or find hot content. So within that one campaign, they can find hot content. Now, what else do they see within the campaign? Well, maybe besides that, they can create the name of the campaign. So create, so they name the campaign. All right, so maybe that's what they see first. 
and then they find hot content. But what do they need to do to find hot content? Well, if you refer, refer back to here, it says if user enters a keyword. So name the campaign, find the hot content, which consists of enter a keyword all right so move it here and then what's next here is then the plugin goes to google and there's a keyword so this is all the user needs to do so maybe what i need to do is i need to color code it so since the user is kind of a pinkish, maybe I'll make it a uh, green, light green. What I'm going to do is anytime the user does something or sees something, it's going to be green. If the WordPress plugin does something, let's say we're going to make it like a light, like a light blue. All right. So the user sees the list of campaigns. That's part of the plugin itself. So I'm going to make this blue, create new campaigns, find hot content. All right. So all of this is blue because this is part of the plugin. So maybe what I'll do is I'm going to color code it. So green means user, blue means WordPress plugin. And we'll call this user interface. And then, of course, we have the third thing, which is what the user or what the WordPress plugin does. So WordPress plugin action. And we're going to make this maybe a purple, a light purple. All right. So that way, every time we see green, it's something that the user does. Every time we see blue, it's what we see as the user interface in the WordPress plugin. And then if the WordPress plugin has to go to Google or anything like that, it's an action. So we see that as purple. All right. So this is our color coded so that we can read it better. So we'll put this here. All right. So enter keyword, that's definitely a green. So that's the user. And as you're going through the process, this process might be somewhat boring, but hey, you know what? This is going to make your life a lot easier when you actually develop the software. All right, so enter a keyword, then what? All right, so then the plugin goes to Google. So remember, this is the action for the plugin. So I'm going to copy that. So what I'm doing is I'm copying this and then I'm pasting it. But I'm using my shortcut keys, so I'm using... Control C and Control V like that. So now what I need to do is drag this down here. We don't need this. We're going to put this here. And then next we have the plugin goes to Google and enters a keyword. So goes to Google and enters user keyword. All right, so we're going to link that there. Then what? Well, then Google gives a list of suggested keywords. So obviously that's not the action of anything. So I'm going to we'll make this white. Let's say Google shows a list of suggested keywords. So that's what happens next. So I'm going to make the, we're just basically connecting the dots. So I'm connecting it from here to here. That's why you see the arrow going forward. Once it gives a list of the suggested keywords, then the plugin copies the top 10 suggested keywords. So going back here, this is, we're going to copy this, paste that. I'm going to drag it over here. And then drag it here, like so. And then 
Grabs top 10. Hot. Let's see. Okay, so the plugin grabs the top 10 suggested keywords. Okay, that's what we want. Keywords. Okay, so next, we're almost done. So then the plugin goes to the popular blog directory. So we copy that over here, align it so everything's good. Connect this little dot over to here. And then the plugin goes to X blog directory. You could tell the programmer, I want a list that I constantly update of the hottest blog directories, or you could have it just go to one, but that can be elaborated further later on. So it goes to X blog directory and enters the top 10. I'll just call it SK suggested keywords. All right, so from there, what next? So types it in, and then the plugin shows the hot content. So usually at this point though, of course, in detail, we have blog shows hot content. So at this point, the WordPress plugin is going to grab the hot content and display it to the user. Now, of course, this is where the user comes in, right? So the user sees the list and chooses. So next, I'm gonna put it here. User sees lists of hot content and picks. Next, the once after they pick, then what? Okay, we go back here. Then the plugin copies a link of the hot content that the user chooses to the WordPress blog. So copies or adds link to WordPress posts or page. Then you could get all elaborate and you could say, hey, after that, you know, the, the system will allow the user to enter information with the, their thoughts and all of that on the content so that it is properly content curated. So that's it. That's pretty much all you have to do. And this is what I would do. And at this point, you have this in hand, you have this in hand, so the programmer can literally see what's happening all throughout. And then after that, what we need to do is we need to, of course, build out the user interface. So we kind of got a glimpse here. So if we go back here, we can see the user interface right here, right? So we've already done a lot of the legwork. All we have to do is use a graphic program to kind of design what each of these look like. All right. So with that said, I'll see you in the next video. Hello and welcome to video number seven. And we're going to talk about user interface design. So once you have a visual flow chart or map of what your software will do, it's time to work on the user interface, which is what the user is going to see. So the flowchart really was for you to understand and for the programmer to understand, but the user interface is also for the programmer and so that you have an idea of how things are going to be laid out and all of that. So creating this along with the flowchart will allow you to connect the visual dots, thus creating better specifications for the programmer to understand. So to do this, you're going to need to have an image editor or other tools. So with that said, let me go ahead and show you how. Okay, so this is kind of going to be the fun part because you get to actually create the user interface, which is what the user is going to see. So if we go back to Lucidchart over here, we saw that we, we color coded everything just to make it easier. If you think about it, if you, we didn't color code it, it would be hard to figure out what is happening. So we can see that the user comes in, 
they obviously see the WordPress plugin and what we need to figure out is what they're going to see. All right. So obviously the programmer, if they get, have CSS and a little bit of design, and if they've developed WordPress plugins in the past, they are pretty much going to be able to figure this out. But you do want to give them some guidelines, but you don't want to say, hey, you have to do this, but you want to give them some structure so that they have an idea of what you're looking for. Because otherwise what happens a lot of times is even with website development or any project development is a lot of times people say, I want this, but they're thinking this, but then the programmer is thinking something totally different. So you want to make sure that you are able to make sure that they're on the same page. All right. So we come back here and this is what the user sees the WordPress plugin. They see a list of campaigns. They have the ability to create new campaigns and they name the campaign. They find the hot content. So if I go through here, it's pretty, pretty easy. In fact, most programmers should be able to figure this part out, this, this, and this. Now we just want to make it, like I said, just to make sure that we're hundred percent on the same page. So what do we want people to see when they first see the WordPress plugin? Maybe they see the list of campaigns and maybe they see the ability to create new campaigns. So let's write that down. So I want you to open up paint or whatever you want to use. Let's just use paint because that's the bare bone minimum. If I can use paint, you should be able to use paint or something else. All right. So usually when you come to a site, let's see here, I haven't used paint in a while, but you normally let's use this here. Let's see what happens. Okay. So normally you enter a box like this. And then of course you see the left-hand side with a WordPress plugin as the menu bar. And normally you see like the plugin, you know, information here. And then of course you see like, you know, the top bar and then, and then of course the main part is right here. So maybe we'll make this red and actually, yeah, we'll just keep it black. All right. So within here itself, we have the options here. So maybe the menu bar here, we could say menu bar. So I'm going to make an arrow here and the menu bar, they should have the ability to see a list campaigns, create new campaign. And, you know, don't worry if you, you can't figure it out or you're like, okay, how's this whole process going to work? Do I need to create a short code? Do I need to do this? Don't worry about it. I would allow the programmer to do that, but you're just trying to get an idea for yourself what you're expecting. But over here we can see list campaigns. Maybe they see the name of plugin. And then inside here we have, let's say they click here let's see here um let's say the welcome screen you have a welcome screen so welcome screen and depends on you what you want to put on the welcome screen that's fine but let's say that they have the option to choose the list campaigns create new campaign over here so that's going to be a totally different screen Next, so let's see what we're going to do here. Next, I'm going to open up a new window. So that's going to be screen one, the welcome screen. All right. So now we're going to be focusing in on that little box. 
So I'm going to open up a brand new window and we're going to put a box here. This is what they're going to see. Now, if they click on create new campaign, or let's say this, they're going to click on list campaign. So I'm going to type list campaigns. And let's see, we're not going to focus on the menu bar. We're just going to focus on the, the main box kind of thing. So let's go back over here. List campaigns. So what do they see? Maybe they see statistics. Maybe they see a list of campaigns. What do they see? So we're going to say, all right, we'll do that. You know what? I'm just going to make a menu bar. So it's just easier. Here they see campaign one, campaign two. Campaign three, campaign four, and they should have the ability to edit each campaign. So that should be that. And then let's type in pain again. Now, all these are easy, but when it comes to actually implementing the other parts, let's see. So that's easy. List campaigns, create new campaign, and so we have create new campaign. Let's do create new campaign. So you might be thinking, why am I doing this? Well, it's, I just told you the reason, but it's, it'll make life easier, a lot easier for you later on. So. All right. So create campaigns. This part's going to be a little bit more elaborate. Create campaign. So maybe there's a box for, let's see, campaign name. Let's see what else here. We don't need that for now. Move back here. Okay. So name campaign then find hot content, but then they need to enter the keyword to do that. So name campaign and then maybe keyword. Enter keyword. So maybe we have a box like a form field here, and then maybe there's a form field here for the keyword. All right, so we enter the keyword here, they enter the enter button. So let's see, maybe there's an enter button. So we'll just make the star as like the enter button or something. They click the star and then it produces the content. So from here, maybe there's a progress bar. And the progress bar is here and moves around like, oops, like that, make it blue like that. So as we're waiting, the progress bar is there because it does take time to go out and scrape content. So maybe the progress bar is good. So it just makes the user think that it's actually collecting data. So you do that, and then after that, we go back over here. Then Google it goes to Google, enters the keyword. So now this is what the user sees, right? This is all the background. So user doesn't even see what's going on here, all right? So because we know it's green and blue, we can skip all the way to the green. So next, the user sees a list of hot topics and picks. So maybe after that, we could say, here's the list right here. So maybe if they see a list here, a large list, and they can choose or they can select which ones they want. So maybe there's like a, 
a radio or checkout checkbox or something where they can select the hot topic that they want. They select it. And then, of course, the next screen would be it actually copies the content to the WordPress block. So how does that look like? Well, maybe it automatically does that. I don't know. But that's really between you and the programmer, but the programmer should be able to figure all that out. So that's not something that you really have to worry about. So what I would do next is I would just, you know, copy this and save these to your computer and you're pretty much good to go. Now, I'm not going to close all these out because we're going to need this in the future video when we put together the final specifications of the final contract. And we'll see you there. Hello and welcome to video number eight. This is writing your specifications. So congratulations, by now you have in hand the most important part of the software creation process. Now all we have to do is take everything that we have put together and make it look like it's something that it's an official document that you can hand over to your programmer. Now this is a very, very important part because if you get this part wrong, your programmer will charge you more money to decipher what you want. So what we talked about in the previous video about the telephone game, where if you tell somebody, they tell somebody, and they tell somebody. Even if it's uh, three people, by the time it gets to the third person, it's totally different. So that's why you want to make sure that you have something in a written document, which essentially is your contract and your contract between you and the programmer because if your programmer turns around and says no that's going to cost more money or i can't do that because this is not what we talked about this is going to talk you know cost more money cost more time you're just going to have to go along with it if you don't have a written contract so this is your contract and i'm going to show you how to finalize the document Okay, so what I need to do is simply grab all the images. So I need to grab this right here, which is the flow chart. I need to grab all three of these user interface designs that I created. And of course, I need to grab this here. Now, as far as the pictures go, what I like to use is I used to like to use a program called Snagit. There are many different programs out there. Basically, what you want to do is you want to grab this image and put it into a document. And in this case, we're going to be using Word. Now, if you're using a Mac computer, you can simply click, I believe it's like shift something four, and then you can grab the image. But if you're using a PC like me, you're going to need to have a program that actually grabs the screens. So I went ahead and did this for this one, this one, and this one. And with Lucidchart, What's nice about it is you can save it and publish it as a PNG, a PDF file, whatever you want to. But I went ahead and did that for this. And as you can see here, this is the flow chart here. We have the screenshots for the welcome screen, the list campaign screen. And of course, let's see, we didn't have the this one here. So I'll need to go ahead and do that right here. So we grab that there. So we grab that and there we go. So this is right here. So we're good to go right there. And then of course we have the actual information. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this and I'm going to go to word and let's just go ahead and copy and paste that in here. Now I want everything to be uniform and look nice. So I'm going to, Maybe size it down. WordPress plugin hot content finder specifications. And specifications is just a fancy name of a document that contains information for the telling the programmer what to do. All right, so this is a step by step process. We can say step by step process outline. And then below that, we want to have the flow chart. And I'm going to go ahead and just copy this, which is right here and paste it here. So what I did just now was I just 
select it all and I'm using a PC so I did control A control C and I'm just copying it directly another way that you could do this is save it as an image and of course go in and insert the image into the word document so that's what I did here next thing we need to do is we have the user interface design so we want to make sure that everything is in order so this one's the first one which is the welcome screen this one's the second one which is the list campaigns so we have that here and we have this one here and then of course we have this one here and there we go so that's that's pretty much it as far as the images and all that goes now you still need to write down the deadline and this is something that you're gonna agree upon with the programmer uh, expected deadline what is what is covered for the price so price bug price because that's that's something that most people don't think about they don't think about the bugs and every program is going to have bugs even the best of best programmers you're gonna run into bugs that's just something normal I mean if you think about even Facebook has bugs all the time and they're very obvious bugs so even the biggest multi-million dollar companies have bugs so you just gotta price it in there and figure out what the price is and negotiate is the bugs included in the price or or is it an hourly wage or whatever I will say from experience that a lot of programmers will say hey I'll do it for like 500 bucks just because they need the money at that moment but then when time comes around they realize oops I need you know more money so you want to make make sure that you negotiate everything up front first before you get started so expected deadline the price but are the bugs included in the price or is it is it hourly what is it so basically what is covered and you want to give all this information down here and anything else that you can think of any concerns any questions you need to talk to the programmer first don't go on Upwork or anything like that and just pick somebody make sure you do your due diligence get on the phone get on Skype talk to them make sure before you invest all that money because software development is a good amount of money and especially if you want a good plugin that is dynamic so what I showed you down here though is and I won't confuse you further but Google whenever you create scraping programs if you decide to go with this Google does not like to be scraped so your programmer and you will need to figure out a way around that which is to normally by using proxies and proxies cost money the more users you have the more proxies you will have and that's something to think about but obviously that's why I'm saying don't worry about it right now when you talk to your programmer they're gonna be able to help you with all that information alright so once you're done with that turn it into a PDF file and you are good to go okay so now that we are pretty much done this is kind of a bonus but in video number nine I want to talk about finding programmers I'm not talking specifically about going out and finding a programmer but I'm talking about what kind of characteristics and traits that you should be looking for within a WordPress plugin programmer because not all programmers are going to be the same one programmer may be knowledgeable in one area but unless they're really knowledgeable in WordPress plugin and they've created WordPress plugins before then you're going to want somebody who is their skill set is that and not somebody who is really really strong in a different area you want somebody who essentially is specialized in this area all right now a good WordPress programmer is going to need to be well versed in PHP PHP is basically a web application programming language you don't really need to know all that but just it's just PHP and then MySQL which is the database that the WordPress runs on and PHP and MySQL actually 
is a program language that runs many other frameworks besides WordPress. So just keep that in mind. So they also need to be well versed in the WordPress framework, meaning they have developed WordPress plugins before. Now they should be able to do a little design, but don't worry if they're not super fantastic on the design level. You want somebody who is strong on the programming side more importantly. Now I want to warn you and I want to caution you. There are tons and tons of PHP and MySQL programmers out there, but unless they have produced at least minimum three WordPress plugins, do not go with them. Because like I said earlier, PHP and MySQL is a very common language to produce web applications. They should also be well versed in CSS3 and JavaScript. CSS is a design element which will allow them to create the user interface based on what you created earlier and make that happen and make it look nice. They should also be able to read someone else's code. What I found over the years when hiring people was that most programmers want to create a plugin from scratch. And while that is great and fine and dandy, you want somebody to have the ability to read somebody else's code. And what I mean by that is let's say you give somebody a plugin. Let's say you find a WordPress plugin from another programmer. You buy the rights for that plugin and you want to make it better. If you find a programmer that wants to create it from scratch, that's not good. You want to find a programmer who can read somebody else's code to make it better. So there are many different approaches that you can take. You can either develop the plugin from scratch and that's fine. Or you can buy out a WordPress plugin that might not be doing as well and then make it better. But you want to find a good programmer. A good programmer is just that somebody who can actually read somebody else's code. If not, then run, they are probably newbies. And that doesn't necessarily mean they are all newbies, but it's better to find somebody who can read somebody else's code. So whatever site you use, you can use upwork.com. You can use elance.com, which I believe now is actually upwork.com. There are other sites out there. Whatever site that you decide to use to hire your programmer, do not hire anyone who doesn't have good feedback. So you obviously need to do your due diligence, look at their profile, make sure they have really good comments, make sure that they are actually developed plugins in the past. And most of that is pretty self-explanatory. Make sure you do your due diligence. Now, another thing that I recommend that you do is it's better to work with individuals and not agencies because when you have problems or bugs that arise, you want to have a dedicated programmer that you work one-on-one. -on -one. A lot of times when you work with agencies, they will give you someone to develop your plugin. But then when you have problems, they'll give you somebody else and somebody else. And it just creates a very major headache and hassle that you just don't need to deal with. So that's my recommendation to you hire individuals that you can work one-on-one -on -one or individuals that you might be able to partner with and develop the plugin. So you might be the business side and the marketing side. You can partner with somebody to develop the WordPress plugin and give them a cut, like a 50, 50% cut or whatever percentage that you decide to give. But at the end of the day, individuals are just easier to work with. And you want to think long-term as well. You will want to budget the initial costs and the long-term costs. Now, what do I mean by that? This is what usually happens. If a programmer bids, let's say $600 to develop your plugin, know that in reality that it actually costs two times. So normally it would cost $1,200 over time to fix bugs. Yes, it might be $600 for the initial, but there are going to be bugs and it's going to take time. Also, if they say like, oh, it's going to take two months. Normally, yes, it might take two months for them, but there are bugs and they're going to have to work with you to make it work. So normally I double that or even triple that amount. Sometimes it takes four months. Sometimes it takes triple the amount, which is six months. So just keep that in mind as far as budgeting goes. 
most of the time, if you even see somebody that says, oh, I can do this in a week or I can do this in a, you know, two weeks, unless their feedback says that, I would be very, very skeptical of that. I've seen some programmers and I've hired some programmers in the past that can do it in two weeks. But realistically, after fixing bugs and all that, it's usually two or three months later. Very, very rarely have I seen people do it overnight. Now, like I said, Upwork.com is a good site to go to and find programmers. And always ask to see previous WordPress plugins. Make sure that they have developed programs before and plugins before. And another little thing, another little tip is make sure that they all look the same or perform the same way. So what you're looking for are patterns. I've already taught you how to find patterns in consumer demand. But if you want to figure out if somebody's legit or not, look at their plugins, see if they have a style because everybody has a style. If you look at an artist, they all have a specific style. If you look the way you work, you you have a specific style. And if they all perform within a specific style, meaning maybe they look very, very similar or they perform very similar, that's a good indication that they actually developed that program. Now, obviously feedback is very important. That's a good indication as well if they actually know what they're doing. So at the end of the day, what I'm just saying is do your due diligence. And because the reality is that some people plagiarize, some people copy other people's plugins, and that's a great way to detect. In this day and age, I've seen so many people pretend to be programmers and copy other people's plugins just to get by and then you realize later that you've paid this person and they've taken code from somebody else. So another thing you want to make sure to say is all of your code needs to be original. You cannot plagiarize or copy anybody else's code. All right. So with that said, congratulations again, you've reached the end of this video course. Make sure you go back, watch the videos and make sure you actually implement everything that I've taught you to turn your idea, to design it, and now, once you're done, you can give it to your programmer. 